What's up guys, Corbin from Circa 2020 here. I start every video like that. I probably need to come up with something new by now, but guess what? Content, boom, we're gonna come out with some new content. I told you guys I was gonna go back and focus so much more on content, especially through the first part of this year to make up kind of the soggy ending to 2020. And it's January 6th, um, probably a day that'll go down in history. So I think we could all use a little bit of a distraction or a project that we can work on together. So I have something really cool for you guys. Um, one of my good friends today stopped down, uh, hung out with me at the house for a little while. We got to catch up, got to talk. That was cool. And he dropped off something, a really cool project that we're going to be able to work on as a YouTube community together. And it's actually something that's really cool. So here it is. This is a 19 late 40s oh, i'm hitting stuff late 40s 50s just very basic uh j c higgins model 101.24 this is a sears and roebuck catalog 22 long rifle with the pullback hammer very simple very crazy simple cool little antique of a gun um and he brought it down today and we were looking at it. So what he actually did, um, this was his grandfather's gun when his grandfather was a boy. What's super cool about it is it was in the attic for ever. Um, and somebody had found it. I don't know if it was his grandfather, but somebody had found it. And they decided to give it to my buddy so he could give it to his son for Christmas. So gave it to his son and I said, dude, this would be such a cool project to restore and to Cerakote if you want. Because, you know, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of collector's value here. Um, to restore it to factory condition wouldn't gain you a ton of anything. Um, these are not highly sought after pieces, but they are really neat. And I am super excited to bring this back. Um, maybe not to its an original luster, but something pretty cool. And his son actually picked the colors, and it's going to be a pretty neat deal. So what we're going to do is, uh, starting tomorrow, I'm going to take this thing apart, and we are going to Cerakote this together. I'm actually going to take it apart right here on the table real quick, and then we're going to, well, I'm going to sandblast it tomorrow. i got to wait for the Cerakote to come in. So this will end up being probably a two-week process till this video actually comes out. Uh, but we're going to work on this together, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So what we have, again, 1940s, 50s, uh, Sears and Roebuck Catalog 22 Long Rifle. We're going to go over how you would do this with wood, a couple other things we're going to do to tighten this baby up, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. So let's sit down and get this thing torn apart and get it ready to go in the sandblaster. You guys are going to come with for that tomorrow. All right, so we're gonna tear this thing down. Now, this is the simplest firearm I've ever seen in my life. I actually tore it down today while he was here because I wanted to look through the bore, make sure it closed on a round, make sure it ejected the round, uh, make sure the trigger and the hammer and everything worked uh, because, you know, it's really important to me. This has not been used in probably 30 years at least. To make sure that we're not putting a bunch of money and time and investing a bunch of resource into a firearm that won't function so the first thing that we'll do obviously make sure it's clear it's as clear as can be so then we will pull the trigger back remove the little bolt so what we're actually going to do with this bolt guys um I had talked to him and I said, you know, I could Cerakote this bolt uh, on a regular bolt gun, not a semi gun, but a regular bolt gun. The bolt doesn't see any extreme speed and wear, so you could Cerakote it. But in order to Cerakote this properly, you need to disassemble everything and just do the bolt itself, not do the extractor and some of the other parts. My fear is that if I take this apart and something would break, uh, or God forbid, lose a small spring or a small pin, you're not getting parts for this. So what we opted to do with this particular part is I'm going to use my polishing tools um, and I'm going to go ahead and polish this bolt out and uh, we're going to kind of do it that way. 
and I may possibly get some chemical blue and re-blue this, we'll see. But I think polished is gonna be okay. So a couple other things we're gonna do here is now that that's out of the way, we can lift the action. And I don't think you guys are ready for this. Um, this is gonna be really cool. Because if you guys have never seen one of these, how incredibly simple these are. So you just remove this, whoops, remove this bolt. I'm not sure why that wants to thread out. I thought earlier it just fell out, but this is the only fastener that keeps the action, barrel, and stock together. So this bolt, we're obviously gonna clean this bolt up, clean the burrs out of the straight edge uh, spot there. Clean it all up and this will get Cerakoted. Maybe polished, we'll see. I wanna talk to him and see what he wants to do about that. And we'll go ahead right now and just spin this trigger guard out. So we'll get all the metal removed. I'm gonna put it in a baggie so I don't lose anything. Now luckily a part like this, you could just go to your local hardware store and find that. And realistically, if you lost the little bolt that goes here, you could find that as well. So a couple things we're gonna work on with this particular fire Obviously the Cerakote is one. The Cerakote's gonna be super important. So this stock is going to get done a sniper gray color, but we have a little bit of work to do with the stock. When this action and barrel sits in here, even if you tighten, even if you tighten up this bolt in here as much as you can, there is a little bit of movement with the barrel and the stock. So what I'm actually going to do, and the owner is 100% okay with this, we talked, is I'm going to wrap the barrel in plastic wrap or a release agent, but probably plastic saran wrap. And in this area right here, I'm going to lay a thin layer of either epoxy or like a mud, and we're going to try to bed the barrel back into the stock so there isn't as much play. This was never, it was, it's kind of like a pillar bedded stock because it does have a pillar, but it only has one pillar. So there's a lot of movement. So we do need to tighten up the valley that the barrel is on. And again, this is just a very simple first plinking gun uh, for his son and something that they can get passed down through the generations. The stock is pretty stained. I think there might be a little bit of mold that started on it at one point. So, you know, we got a little bit of work to do with this, but that's why we're gonna go ahead and just completely take this away from factory condition and turn it into something really cool for his little guy. He's gonna be super excited. Now with this barrel, this will get bead blasted tomorrow as well. And we'll go over, you know, how you don't wanna get sand down in the barrel, obviously, and how to plug this with silicone and all that. But I wanna show you guys how incredibly simple this firearm works. So we'll go ahead, you have to, it's gonna to be tough. So you gotta to push the trigger back and then you can bring the bolt in. Here's what's crazy. So the bolt's back, okay? You pull your hammer back. The only trigger mechanism this thing has is right here. Once this trigger is pulled, it just releases this bolt and what it's, and this is kind of, this bar here is basically your, your trigger spring. That's basically spring steel. So really incredible. So we'll pull the trigger, pull the bolt out. And just that little tiny lever, that little lever right there, that is basically your trigger sear. What that does is that catches on uh, this piece here, and when this is pulled back, um, there's a little piece indentation down there that that catches on. When it releases that, the hammer goes forward, hits your rim fire, and that's about it. Guys, incredibly simple firearm. So we got it all tore down. Uh, next time you see me in this video, I'm going to be in front of the sandblaster. We are going to sandblast this wood. Um, we use a very delicate 
over at the shop that I do a lot of work at, we use a really delicate aluminum oxide um, blasting media and it's 100 grit and we have a pressure nozzle so I can turn it from 100 down to 30 or 40. So we will very lightly blast this off to get all the varnish off that way when we do put it in the oven the varnish doesn't screw up the Cerakote and hopefully we can get some of this uh, there's a little bit of rot in a couple places hopefully we can get some of that out but all in all it's really not in bad shape for being you know at least 70 years old so really really super cool I love projects like this so we'll see you at the blaster All right guys, so if you've never seen a bead blaster or a sand blaster, this is what we're gonna do. So we got our barrel here and as I said, we are going to, I don't know if you'll be able to see this real well, but probably not. We'll use this end of the barrel. We have this uh, right up here. We have some silicone plugs we can put in so no sand gets down where it shouldn't be. And we'll just go ahead and the metal parts we can blast at a pretty high pressure. Or I think I bumped the camera, so we'll just have this nozzle in here and we just go ahead and give the whole thing a quick a quick blast. Now I'm not gonna tear the trigger mechanism apart. Um, I think I could have pressed that nut cert bung out. Uh, the one that is used to fasten the stock. I think I could have pressed that out, but in case I couldn't, I didn't see a huge advantage to tearing it apart. The reason for that is because it's such a simple crude system that has a huge tolerance. If we end up getting a little bit of non-coverage because of the spring or something like that, you're never gonna see it. It's gonna be deep inside the stock. So I'm not too, I'm not super concerned with, with any of that. Make sure we blast in real good where the action is. That looks good. Now we'll flip it over and blast the rest of the barrel here. The glass on these bead blasters has to get replaced about every week in a commercial facility like this. And this glass is actually fairly clear. You pretty much work until you absolutely cannot see anything. And then once that happens, then you put, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera again. Then you, then you use a new piece of glass. So just finishing up this barrel end here. this off quick on the end make sure we get it decent the blasting part is is important but it's not direly important to get everything 100 percent uniform um, because we do have a cleaning process afterwards and that'll reveal a lot too so got that out that looks good now i'm going to go ahead and throw the stop in And with the stock, we'll have to be even more careful. We won't be able to get very close, and we will want to monitor what's going on here. This machine is funny. It'll shock you. If you don't have metal in there, if you're not blasting metal, or if you are blasting metal and you don't have any metal, touching the, uh, the bottom floor of the blaster. For some reason, it does like to shock you. We have no idea why. So I'm currently getting shocked in the arm. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. 
And like I said, guys, we're not using an aggressive media. We use a very delicate media. The media that is preferred by Cerakote is a 100 grit aluminum media, aluminum oxide, I believe. And that is actually what we use. And this is a powder coating operation that I'm at right now. I come over and do a little work with these guys when they get backed up. And uh, they use the same kind of media. It creates just a really nice, smooth finish on all kinds of metal. And the nice part about what I do, even for wood, oops, sorry, wood and polymer, this media can blast it without tearing it up, without being too aggressive. And it really is usable for about everything I do. Might have to disappear from the camera a bit to hit some of these angles just because I put the camera up at the clearest part of the glass, but unfortunately the reason that that part of the glass is clear is because you're not working in that area very often because of the length of the hose in the system. The top of the pistol grip here. And now we just need to get the uh, rear of the butt stop. Make sure we got it all pretty good here. Definitely want to hit this right here a little bit better. But then I think that looks pretty good for us. We'll take it out and see how it looks. So the two main parts we just blasted, the gun stock here, there's a couple parts that we will, right here I want to get a little harder, um, and right here, a couple places where you can still see some shininess from the varnish that was on there. Well, all in all, guys, you would think this would make wood really rough hitting it with that blasting media, and it doesn't. It feels like it's ready to be stained again. Um, very smooth, really nice, and that, that is why we use it here um, for all of our metal projects, but also in Cerakote, that's why they recommend that. Don't underestimate the power of the blasting media when getting into Cerakote, because it is superbly important. Um, the aluminum oxide puts a very even finish with no eggshell, no dimples, no spherical uh, punches into the material. If you use like a glass bead, it'll actually put dimples all over everything, micro dimples. The finish can't make up for that. The very slight grain, the very slight grit that you get with that, the finish lays in perfectly and creates a mirror-like shine or satin shine. And then again, all metal that you blast, pretty much I got this wet so it's going to change, but it all turns out like this. It just has this very uniform gray color. Like I said, we got down into the action real good. Here's the silicone plugs that we have. Now I'm going to keep those silicone plugs in throughout the process. I will not take them out. But see, the blasting does not affect anything. It's such a fine material. It doesn't really get caught anywhere. Just really prepares your metal nicely. Now, for those wondering, I am. I wanted to leave this stuff on to blast it because I don't want to lose it in the blast machine. So now what I'll do is I'll take it off and then we'll blast under there. And I got a couple other little pieces to blast, but I don't want to bore you guys with all of that. I just wanted to show you this is what we do. We got a big old blasting machine, very simple, easy to use, and a good blasting media goes a long way. So we got kind of the middle step of this done. Now that all the factory finish is removed, before we go to Cerakote, which will be in a few days because I'm still waiting on the Cerakote to come in, but 
I am gonna work on the fitment of that stock, and if I come up with anything that works really well, I'm gonna bring you guys along for that too. Um, if not, we'll go straight into the Cerakote from here. So um, next time you see us, we'll hopefully either be fixing a stock, which doesn't really need fixed, but could be improved, or we'll be right back here Cerakoting, going in that big ass oven over there. We'll see ya. All right, guys. Now on to the Cerakote portion of today's, of this project, this restoration, restoration project. Pretty excited about it, so first up, I forgot to bring a clean mixing dish over, so I'm taking this rag, a little bit of denatured alcohol, and I'm just wiping it out the best I can. got it pretty clear here I do think that will be sufficient so when you order from Cerakote this is what you get I just cut the box open you get some catalysts you get the colors that you order in this box I happen to have zombie green and firehouse red so the zombie green is what we're going to be using to start here they also give you a couple uh, mixing funnels, which is nice, or uh, strainers, sorry. So to mix, now I'm gonna keep this brand new catalyst. I get catalyst all the time, so I'm gonna use one of my older things of catalyst here. Let me go grab a syringe. are not using much at all. This is only getting used for a barrel and some other parts. So I'm only going to mix that's probably plenty. A little over 20 mils of solution of Cerakote. So now that we got that mixed wipe this off and normally before it dries I like to rinse out my syringe with acetone and then 1 to 18 1 to 20 mix is what I like so it's not going to be much that's about plenty good there might have even been just a hair too much but we'll survive it's okay on the barrel if we get a little bit more shine I'm not not super concerned about that. Wipe that cap out. Give it a good hard mix here. Now with your metal parts, after you sandblast, before you spray, you want to wipe them down with acetone. They, they do recommend soaking with acetone, but in my opinion, if you have something that didn't have a lot of grease or oil on it, like this was an old rifle that was in storage for 30 some years, you really don't have to worry about it too much in those cases. So now we'll take this strainer here, one of them. It is kind of hard with the gun I have because the gun is so little. Run it through the strainer. That will absolutely give us enough. And we're pretty much going to be ready here in just a second to spray. Let me move you guys over. So one last time before we spread. Make sure everything's blown off real good. 
Make sure your barrel is plugged on both ends. We have silicone plugs here that work really well. Let me check with my... Turn my regulator off. I was looking for. I might mix up just a little bit more just to make sure. You hate to have to do it again. Well, you can't do it again. After you put it in the oven, it comes out. That's what you got. You have to completely strip it if you want to do more. So just put a little bit, one dash of catalyst, like one drop of catalyst, build this back out. So now cleaning out the gun right away, first thing I'll do is just throw some acetone in the gun or wipe out. Take my rag, stick it down in here and wipe a lot of that Cerakote out to start with alcohol on your rag. Cerakote is extremely sticky. It chews up air guns. I went through a few. People say they've had good luck tearing the whole gun down. Not me. I've not had any luck doing that at all. So I like to just wipe out all the Cerakote out of the, the hopper here and then run some acetone through the gun pull it a day. it 
pretty much emptying that acetone through the gun, using that on the rag to kind of, I'm kind of back filling it a little bit, see, like that. Dump out what's left, make sure you got a nice dry spray, you're done. The way I look at it, I do five, six Cerakote jobs with the gun and then I just get a new gun because for me they don't last. $20, buy a cheap gun, it works just fine. As you can tell, we're gonna go run these in the oven and probably gonna end up being tomorrow now so I get to put this thing, get all of it done. Um, had a little bit of problem with my oven. Now for the gun stock, I don't really know. We're kind of learning together. So I want to take the acetone. Just give this a final light. Try a second. Now I'm going to put quite a bit on here. Because I did have one, I have worked with one piece of wood so far, it was a gun stock, and I had an issue with it soaking in. Put that on really ultra heavy. Now the wood can only go in at 150 degrees, so that'll go in last. So I realized in the next part of the video, you guys never really got a good look at what the finished product was. So I took these videos quick while I was editing. That way you guys could kind of see real slow how everything turned out. Really happy, smooth finish, looks cool. Bentley will love it.
Hey guys, so we got everything finished up on this, got it put back together. Um, I wasn't able to capture video of getting it out of the oven and kind of, it was just getting it out of the oven, letting it cool off on the rack and then bringing the parts home and putting it back together. You didn't miss much. It's kind of the reverse of what we did to do everything. So, uh oh, the cat's gonna jump. What are you gonna do? So this is the finished product. We got the Sniper Gray stock, wood stock, Sniper Gray. We have the zombie green barrel, trigger, trigger guard. And then for the bolt, because like I said, when we were tearing this apart, I did not want to tear uh, this bolt apart and knock these pins out. Because if we were to lose a part, a small spring, a pin, plunger, something like that, a detent, you're not getting a part for this. Not very easily. So it wasn't something I was willing to risk. So talking to dad in this case... Um, I polished down the bolt. It looks a little dirty because there's a bunch of oil on it, but I polished down the bolt. And then for the bolt handle and the hammer, the charging hammer, the handle, whatever, the pullback, we, uh, I sandblasted it. The nice part about sandblasting good steel like this, good old steel, is because it turns up such new metal and such fresh raw metal, and it puts a hundred grit finish on it, almost like Cerakote. So, if you keep it if you keep it oiled and you put a good oil on it to begin with it's going to impregnate that metal you are not going to get it to rust nearly as quick as you would if you were to scuff it up with like sandpaper or something like that um it almost that that sandblasting material almost leaves an anti-rust finish behind it it actually works really well because there's a small amount of zinc in that aluminum oxide um the sights i didn't want to cerakote because if you if you have to move that site, it's going to ruin the Cerakote because um, it's a, a tension style site. So that's the same thing. Same kind of finish. Um, but, you know, you have to use your head. If you cannot fully tear apart a component, you can't Cerakote it because it's not going to work. Cerakote's very sticky. It's very hard. So if I were to try to Cerakote some of this bolt, the extractor arm wouldn't work. You know, stuff like that. One other thing I wanted to tell you with wood stock. Something that some guys do is they will strip the uh, stain off with a with a chemical stripper, which is fine, you can do that. And then they'll epoxy the stock and fill in all the wood grain, make it really hard. And then they'll sandblast over the epoxy real lightly, and then you'll have a really super smooth Cerakoted wooden stock. Wasn't something we wanted to get into for this you know cheap little project. This was more of a just, you know, make sure it's nice and smooth, and it is. Um, you can feel the grain, but it's still smooth. The Cerakote worked really well on it. Sometimes if you don't kind of put something over that wood, this, the wood can soak that Cerakote up and make it look a little light in spots, but this actually turned out incredible, partly because I put a lot on it. I put probably three times the amount you would put on a metal part on the wood, um, knowing that it was going to draw in a lot of it, and it actually it turned out really good, so I'm super happy with that. And if you have any questions with Cerakote, uh, where to get it, how to do it, you know, different steps in the process, feel free to comment below. Um, if you like it, and, and again, this is an eight-year-old's pick. So I don't want anybody on there trashing the color or anything because an eight-year-old wanted a zombie green and gray zombie sniper rifle. And that's what we built him, and he is going to be happy. I'm sure Bentley's going to love it. Um, and then next up, we actually have Bentley's dad's AR. We're going to do a red battle worn on that. Um, I have a bow riser that we're doing satin aluminum um, for one of my buddies who owns Axis Strings. And I got a Mossberg 500 Regal Gold Trigger Edition that we're doing satin aluminum metal. And we're going to refinish the wood with a cherry uh, polywax. So a lot of restorations, a lot of cool things. I told you guys we were going to have awesome content coming up this year, but I'm going to drop these gun restoration videos probably once a month, these Cerakote videos once a month. I don't want to plow a ton and then have to go do something else. I want to keep the 22 series, the Cerakote videos, optics testing, budget, anything. You know, I want to keep a nice variety going so you guys can kind of turn them into series. So you guys have something to tune into. And if it's something that you don't want to tune into, you don't have to. But subscribe because we got a ton of content coming and 96% of you don't subscribe. So subscribe. We got more Cerakote videos coming. And uh, I love this thing. 
got to shoot it. I've had my phone vertical. I just took a weird video to send it to, to the owner so he could see that it was functioning properly and everything. Um, I might throw that in the end. It might look a little weird because the phone's tilted. I'll see how it looks. If it looks terrible, I'm not putting it in. But anyways, till the next time we see you, we'll see you.